Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk. 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 It is actually number ninety four, but Sue's not here to draw the ninety four that goes in here. So we'll go ninety four. That's close enough. Okay. Because I buy that. I can't show nine. Well, if you show nine, I can show four, and then true. All right. But if you've got a question for us, throw it in the chat room, uh, especially if it has to do with home voiceover studio technology. There must be something you want to know. We've been doing the show for almost 12 years. You figure we know just about everything. But then someone will surprise us with something. Well, I'll tell you, people need to be retaught things over and over as, as today's uh, lessons in my client experiences. Uh, <laughs> well, we, you know, you need repetition to really get things to sink in. So. That's right. Here we are to answer those same questions over and over. All right. Well, in that case, we'll get the chance to discuss <laughs> that stuff because you've got your you've got your your tech update, and I want to talk about bad internet advice. Mm -hmm. for voice when you, you put it in there as internet advice, I thought you were going to talk about what kind of cable modem to get. <laughs> well, people can ask that, but you know, it's like but no, you know. you're talking about bad internet advice, which we we're we're we're, we're definitely know what that's about. All righty. Well, it's time for Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk right now. Tech Talk. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver... Body Shop. Or VO... B.S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech, tech talk. talk. This tech is talk. Tech, tech Talk. talk. This is what people want to hear. They want to hear George and I talk about stuff. I mean, yes. we talk about all sorts of stuff when we're together and we get to discuss stuff, but it always comes down to not necessarily talking about any specific clients. Uh, we won't mention any <laughs> names. It happens. It, 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 it does happen, but we won't say who. Uh, but we, you know, we talk about our lives and all those other things, but when we talk about home voiceover studios, everybody seems to want to listen, which is why for the past almost 12 years, we've been doing this darn show. Dern and you guys keep asking questions. And you keep coming back for and, more. And you keep coming back for even more than that. And that's why we're here. And uh, we want to make sure that you get all of the answers you need to keep your audio sounding really spiffy. There's a word you That's the word. Have never used. No more whistle. We're just going to use spiffy from spiffy. now on. Spiffy. Yes, spiffy, yes. <laughs> we need yep, to come up with an acronym for spiffy. <laughs> See, sounds, sounds pretty <laughs> in uh i don't know never mind okay well the, here's the thing george and i do this this is we're experts in home voiceover studio talk about a niche there are a lot of people out there that say that they're voice acting coaches and then they're all saying i coached with so-and-so but they never taught me any of this stuff well, or you coach with so and so, and they taught you the wrong, wrong stuff. Wrong thing. That also that happens, happens a whole lot. Sometimes. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Mm. But you can work with one of us because we're the experts. We're the guys that actually know and understand what goes on in your closet, in your PVC booth, or in your in your pre prefab booth, or one that you built yourself. What's the right equipment? What is more importantly, what's the right way to use that equipment? That's the stuff we do. And if something breaks, I, I missed your T-shirt that says I'm here because you broke something. I missed uh, that, too. Where is it? It's probably it was, hiding it in the long, dryer. It was a long time ago, that <laughs> shirt. It had, to get, it had to go out of rotation. Oh, okay. I get the, what, you're wearing T-shirt with holes in it. I don't want to see that. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I'm, where am I going to put them? 
You know, <laughs> these, these are legendary T-shirts from legendary conferences. Anyway, if you want to work with one of us, especially me or George, because that's one of us, uh, if you want to work with George, where exactly do they go to do that? Between coughs, you go to George the dot tech on the web. That's my uh, website, and it's going to be new. <laughs> Just like Dan used to tell us he has a new website coming. <laughs> and I actually do. So. And you did. <laughs> um, and mine is coming. I, I'm still not going to say a date, but it is coming, and it's going to be revolutionary. Uh, but anyway, you can still book services and get access to all of the things that uh, I know and do and teach and train over at georgethe.tech. And Dan, you do a lot of the same kind of thing. I, I do. My style's a little bit different. I, you know, I, I will talk equipment and I will do all those. You probably things. get a little bit more life coaching or, or actual coaching, coaching slipping in there too. Oh, it's like I'm a therapist sometimes. Yes, you I'm know, sure. Uh, there's, there's a lot of panic out there. There's like, yeah. I don't know how to do this. You know, the what's involved panic. in the beginner beginners course. Yeah. Well, over at home voiceover studio.com, I will answer all of your questions. And we can do a consult, uh, whether you're starting from zero, you've got no equipment, you obviously have a computer if you email me, or unless you just use your phone. Uh, and uh, I will teach you from soup to nuts how to get it done right so you don't have to be an audio engineer, which I think is probably a big misunderstanding with a lot of people getting into the voiceover business. It's like, oh, i got to be at all these processors. And I gotta... It's all to me at least it's all physical. And that's what I keep telling George. And I think he almost agrees with. Me. So it's, it's, it's the acoustic yep. of a prop or properties of your booth or where you're recording space your mic that, technique and, and your, your mic, mic technique placement. and setting proper levels and all that kind of stuff. But that's not really all that technical. That's really simple stuff. And we've broken it down into really super things. And if you go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com, I've got my specimen collection cup at the top of the page now. And you can click on that. Send me a raw sample. Uh, and for $25, I will do an analysis of your audio to see what's good about it and what can be fixed. And if it's really bad, then we can, we, you know, we can troubleshoot it and see if we can get your sound sounding what it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. Anyway, it's time for George's tech update. And seeing as he's only been like, taking prescriptions all day. I imagine you've had some time to go onto the internet and come up with a couple of tech issues and tech things that you want to remind us about. Yeah. I was spending entirely too much time on the internet <laughs> and it was getting annoying, <laughs> which is why COVID probably a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but I got tired of, I got tired of doom scrolling. And so, uh, well, first I, I, a microphone showed up. Um, a microphone that I'm using right now, in fact, uh, to do the show. And that's the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Dan's mm -hmm. familiar this with one? this mic because he has it. Um, so here's, here, we'll do it in opposite sides here. Yes. Oh, actually, it'll be over here. I had fully intended on borrowing it when I saw it was on a temporary promotion on price at $79. I was wow. like, oh, geez. That, just, that's a deal I for just, that. I just should buy one. And so here I am using it. So, <clears throat> so I was going to mention this Adobe Creative Cloud thing first, but my voice needs apparently a rest because I I've been coughing. So I'm going to play this a video that while I was laying in bed today, uh, I actually had the energy, thanks to probably some miracle Paxlovid drug treatment I got to today to get me over COVID. I had the energy to put together a video review of the Video Mic Go. And, you know, as usual, it goes into a little bit of depth. It goes into a little bit of troubleshooting and how-to. And I hope you enjoy it. Here it is. Buddy, it's George the Tech. This is the sick in bed edition of, of an unboxing. That's not something I've done before, but what the heck? I'm bored. So this just came in the mail. I bought it with my own money because I've heard about it for a while now. My friend Dan Leonard has one and a few other people. And I just thought, oh, I got to get one because I've been telling people to use them without actually owning one, which I think is not good. So now I own one and it's the Video Mic Go 2 from Rode, obviously. 
So what am I excited about with this mic? I'm excited at the prospect of one, a mic that's very affordable, two, a mic that's extremely portable, and three, a mic that sounds really good. All these things are important to voice actors. The price thing being what it is, I mean, at twice the price, it's probably still a great mic. At $99, insanely good mic, I think, but let's find out. So let's pull it out of the box. What does it come with in the box? Well, it says it's got a digital output, and that's what I'm really most interested in, is using it as a USB mic. However, it does not include a USB cable, which I found out because it shows what comes in the box, and one of those things is not the USB cable. They obviously did that to save money. They did it because they have several different USB cable models, one that goes to Lightning for an iPhone or iPad, one that goes to USB-C, and one that goes to USB-A. Now, I happen to have these second two. The first cable I don't have, but I do have an adapter, which I'm hoping is going to work. So we'll see what happens. And then I'll plug it directly into the phone and finish the video using the mic on the phone. That's what you see inside. Rode does a really great job of doing great packaging, sort of a all paper packaging, no plastics, cardboards. There it is. Look how small it is. Here's the cable that comes with it to plug into a camera. This is not going to work with a smartphone with a TRRS cable. This will only work with a camera with a TRS 8th inch input connection. So most DSLR cameras or mirrorless cameras or prosumer, I would say is the word I'm looking for. Here is the very, very cute and very well made shock mount. If this, well, I was going to say, if this alone was $50, it would be worth it. And it actually is. These are actually $50 shock mounts that I recommend for people using Sennheiser 416s and other shotguns and pencil mics. So the fact that you're getting it, that's half the price of the mic right there. It's insane. Okay. The rest of what's in there is silica gel and a very tiny little, tiny little user manual. It's probably just legalese. So that's it. That's the whole thing. I'm going to take the windscreen off, get a better look at it. It's got a little tag on here. This is the person who inspected it for quality control. Very nice touch. Even at $79, these mics are tested individually in quality control to make sure they sound good. Not made in China, made in Australia. Pretty amazing. Here's the line output jack. This also doubles as a headphone jack. So when you're using it with the USB port right here, this actually allows you to monitor the mic. It actually has zero latency monitoring built in, which is pretty remarkable. All right, so the next question is, can I plug it into the phone and have it send audio in? I know this isn't going to work, right? So I grabbed a few cables. I have this lightning to USB-A adapter, for example. We'll see if this works. If so, it'll save me $30 buying the lightning to USB-C cable that they sell. Let's find out. I'm going to stop the recording, plug it in, and cross our fingers. Okay, it's plugged in. First good sign is that it has a little light lit up, indicating it's plugged in. I don't know if that light has multiple colors or modes, but if it actually is working right now, then you should be hearing me far better than before. Okay, well, first test shows that the mic was not being used. Even though it was plugged in and the light was lit saying I'm on, it was not actually using this mic. So you can see the light is lit right now and I don't think it's using this mic. So either my adapter won't work with this a cable or some other magic sauce must be happening from Rode and their special cable to allow to talk to the extremely picky Apple devices. So let's try some other th tests. Okay, well, now the mic's plugged into my Mac. So let's see if Twisted Wave sees the mic, audio, Input Rode Video Mic Go 2. Boom. 
Is it recording this mic? Definitely. One, two, three, four, five. This is one foot away. One, two, three, four, five. About eight inches away. One, two, three, four, five. About six inches away. One, two, three, four, five. About four inches away. One, two, three, four, five. And two inches away. One, two, three, four, five. All that without the pop screen. So over the network, I copied the Rode Central app, which is what allows me to update the firmware. I ran the firmware updater and it was successful. So we have some actual software features that the mic has, which is amazing considering again what this thing costs. And you've got a high pass filter, which has two points of high pass, 75 and 150. There's flat, flat high pass filter, 75 hertz high pass filter, which is what I would probably use 90% of the time. And a 150 if I was outside with lots of wind or something. There's a high frequency boost, which is something that comes on their Rode NTG 4 series mics. Nice to see it here. Direct monitor. So if you have the headphones plugged into the device, you get direct monitoring and you can control how loud the direct monitoring is from here. How cool is that? And then you have a pad, which would be for recording extremely loud things, or maybe in this case, voiceover, because since we use the mic so close, we might actually want to have the pad turned on so we can have more granular control over the gain if that would be the optimal thing to do or not but for now leaving the gain about 25 percent seems to do the trick well this is my last test to see if the newly firmware updated video mic go to from rode will work as a video microphone plugged into the iphone using an iphone camera adapter then connected by usb a to a USB-C cable. Cross our fingers. Yeah, it looks like you do have to install and use the Rode Central mobile app, so you do have control over the microphone. But once you've done that, you now can record your Rode mic over the camera connection adapter kit. And if you go into a video app, now I'm in the video camera app. Again, being iOS, it doesn't tell you what mic we're using, which I absolutely despise, but it is working. I rest assured, and I'll scratch the mic as proof. There you go. What does it not come in the box that you will need if you want to use it in the way I'm using it? You will need a USB cable. It uses USB-C, so you'll need any standard USB-C to USB-A or a USB-C to USB-C cable, which is what I'm using right now to plug the microphone directly into my MacBook Air. The other thing you'll need is a, an adapter to attach the shock mount to a standard microphone stand. Assuming you have a microphone boom or stand that has a 5 8 microphone thread, this has the European standard, which is a 3 8 inch thread. So it's not even a quarter inch thread like we all have on our tripods here. It is the standard that's used overseas for production sound and, and pro sound, which is three eighths inch. That's all you need, USB cable and the adapter. So you buy those things. If you don't have the cable already, you're at about 125 bucks if you paid full price for the mic. Thanks for listening. George the Tech out. All right, well. <laughs> What did you think? The did, whole time. Did, did we learn anything? Yes. Yes, you have the right cable. Yes. I, I have two of them. I bought an extra, just in case. Yeah, that is the USB-C to lightning cable. Yeah, right. it's a great little mic. Now, this is what you're using right now that you're talking on. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It, as you can hear, it sounds great. As a remote unit, because th this was one of the discussions that we saw on uh, on Facebook this week, is... People are like, well, what's a good road mic? How about a road mic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. This thing is hard to beat. I mean, at $99, it's a good deal. I mean, it's a great deal. I mean, at $199, I would still recommend it without any reservations. They have one up, up the food chain. It's called the Video Mic NTG. It's $250. I don't know if there's any major upgrade you get with that mic i can't figure out what it would be i wasn't sure if the self noise of this little you know inexpensive usb mic would be usable for pro use and from what i can tell the self noise is very acceptable yeah. so i gotta say i'm really impressed
Yeah. With with all you know, with when a lot of people do video work with their iPhone because the camera. And the, the camera's amazing. Um, you know, and you and I have done remote stuff with it, and yep. you know, once you hook up that mic to the to the iPhone, and it just it's like having. It is having professional sound uh, for your video. Yeah, I mean, you and, heard it in and, my video. directional, yeah. The first half of the video was the iPhone mic, picking up all the room reflections, echoing, the whole thing. Yeah. And then the second half was all with the, with the video mic. Right. I mean, it, it was night and day. Yeah. And then you could tell before what, is, what your voice sounded before you take, took plaques of it. <laughs> so it was a little higher. In yeah, you're right. It has changed. I also, I also have a Rode PSA 1 Plus. Um, boom, which, um, because the boom has the same th three eighths thread, this threaded right onto it. And, um, what's impressive about the boom is, you know, they just took the old one, the PSA one, and they just upgraded everything they could. And they're the only ones I've ever seen anybody do this. They, they put these neoprene sleeves over the entire arm so that there's no clunking or any noise or anything from the mic like, arm as you like from springs. Yeah, there's no springs. You can move this thing around like I am right now, and there's no mechanical noises. Wow. You know, it's it's a darn impressive piece of hardware. And, I'll, and the, the, the mounting brackets, everything about the machining of it is, like, really top-notch. So it's a, it's a very impressive mic arm. The mic arm is more expensive than this mic. I think it's about twice <laughs> as much. How did, they make, how did they make it so cheap? Yeah, well, that's it's crazy. crazy. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. Something else, son, about uh, it has to do with Adobe's Creative Cloud, which mm. many of us use. <clears throat> yeah. So like you were saying, I had some time on the internet today. When I wasn't watching the uh, the press release uh, from the uh, Santa Barbara <laughs> police and fire department about the uh, 9 to 12 inches of rain they're expecting over the last 24 hours, they literally gave <laughs> all of Santa Barbara County a shelter in place <laughs> this morning when i wasn't watching that um that was pretty sketchy uh i was found i found this article that um somebody shared on facebook and um it was um oh gosh i can't remember your name i'm so sorry if you're watching um but it's an article about adobe's creative cloud um and that they they opt you in not it's not it's one of those things where they opt you in for something by default instead of opting you out of something by default and what they opt you in on is of course you know how every time you install install a new mac or new mac os it always asks you do you want us to send user uh information to us do you want us to uh do you want to send um how your do you want to send feedback automatically to us about your equipment and your software so we can improve uh, you know, the Apple products, right? And if, if you read that, if you're like me, you probably turn that off. Well, that is also the case with Adobe's Creative Cloud. If everybody that uses Creative Cloud, anything you upload to the Creative Cloud, and that's the, that's the thing. Everybody's kind of having a little bit of a panic moment, <laughs> techno panic moment, unless you're putting everything you do, your photography, your videos, your voiceover recordings, if you're, unless you're using the Creative Cloud thing, it's, a, it's moot. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. But people were having a, a little bit of a fit because in this age of AI is stealing our jabs, jabs, jobs, you know, yeah, they're stealing our jobs. Um, and this, <laughs> then they're looking at this going, holy crap, that means Adobe is scanning every image and every video we send to the cloud and using it to build new AI derivative tools and, you know, learning, learning how to code these things and learning how to, learning how to teach an AI with our content. And, uh, people freaked out when they started reading this from basically from the article I have here from fastcompany.com. I found quite a few articles about this, but there seemed very, very measured about it. It wasn't, you know, from the perspective of, the uh, damaged artist or anything else. It seemed like a very fair and balanced kind of POV. They said, look, it's not really what's going on. But at the same time, the photographer creator they interviewed in the article said, you shouldn't be putting your stuff up in the creative cloud in the first place. <laughs> so. <coughs> so when I had the cough button there. Yeah. So I was a little late on the cough button. So when, when I saw... 
when I saw that, I was like, ooh, that's a bit of a biting comment, you know, like <laughs> nobody professional would put all their content in the creative cloud is what the guy literally wrote in the article. Um, but at the very end, Adobe's, uh, Adobe's weasel out on this whole thing is we give customers full control of their privacy preferences and settings. Uh, the they policy and discussion is, is but... <laughs> well, they do at the end. The, the policy and discussion is not new and has been in place for a decade. Um, to help us enhance our products for customers. The spokesperson directed any customer prefers their content be excluded from analysis to the options on the privacy page. And the article actually links to the actual privacy page on the, on the, on your user account. So if Which you do you want to turn to this read. off, you're going to go to adobe.com. You're going to log into your account and you're going to go into your privacy settings and you're going to turn off the privacy, the, the functions that share that content. It's not very hard to find. Um, if you're, if you're, if this is something you're paranoid about, or if you feel like it's possibly could hurt you in some way, this is a way to turn it off. All right. That's it for me. As well, you can tell, my voice that, doesn't want to talk plenty. a lot longer. <laughs> okay. Well then, uh, then so I get a chance to talk. Let's talk about internet bit. advice. Yeah. Uh, George and I, spend a lot of time on the internet, uh, especially in some chat rooms where people say some stuff or people are, they're learning voiceover and their coach or the person teaching them, whether they're a coach or not, I don't know why I keep using the quotation mark. I think you all know what I mean. Um, there's a lot of bad advice out there when it comes to home voiceover studios. As I like to say, Everybody, aside from George and I, and maybe three or four other people, are experts in only one studio and one voice, and that's their own. And that does not give them the license to tell you what's going to work best for you. So I would suggest, going back to the start of this segment, talking about what George and I do, talk to people that actually know what they're talking about. If you ask a recording engineer, somebody who is a multi-track recording engineer who records lots of spots, they have no idea what's going on in your closet and all the stuff that they do. I think the problem is, is that they live in a different world from what we do. So right. they're like, well, if you're going to do voiceover, you, this is what I use. Well, that doesn't mean anything if you have no idea how to use it. It's not the equipment that gets you the work. It's what goes on between your ears and comes out of your mouth and how it sounds in the room in which you're recording it and how you use your microphone and how you set your levels. Everything else, I'm sorry, is bullshit. Um, you know how many times I've seen like commercial or like, you know, studio engineers recommend voice actors buy an SM7B, for example, a dynamic right. microphone for voiceover. Exactly. You know how many times I've seen Sweetwater? recommend an sm7b for your voiceover studio <laughs> it's Just like grab them by the head and slap them or i've told the people at sweetwater stop doing that well yeah, yeah we don't make as much money that way then you know I well the other, the other thing is yeah because then they get to sell the cloud lifter too well, yeah, you, get to, exactly. you get to buy our friend roger cloud another another boat um but uh <laughs> we, we love you roger um here's the deal also as dan was saying these forums what i've discovered and, I, and I'm speaking for myself here a little bit, is people get a dopamine hit by answering questions, yeah. okay? I think we all have been there a little bit. You feel good. I, I, I will speak for myself. I feel good when I get to answer a question and give what I think is the right advice. And I think everybody, there's a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people on these groups that are all looking for that I want to answer the question first and I want to have the best information. They're all looking for that same kind of dopamine hit. And so your, your information is not driven by, you know, a tremendous amount of depth and knowledge. Sometimes it's very, very cursory. Sometimes it's not based on your actual audio because all you did was post a picture of a waveform or something else. And so that's another thing I've been thinking about. It's just, why do people answer all the questions? Um, what's the purpose and what are they getting out of it? <laughs> there must be a medical reason for it. And you say, yeah, you get a dopamine hit. You get you know, a dopamine it, hit. It's either that or take Zoloft. Um, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, I, I tend to th- I tend to agree with you that that's the. But there are also some people just sending out misinformation because that's the kind of people they are. It's not a lot of them. Most people have very good intentions with the information they send out there. But yeah. how many times have George and I had to get out the mop and ringer and mop up after them? Because it happens oh boy. every week. I was, just because, today, like I have a client who's like trying to send me a wait. She, I'm like, send me. Eight, you know, just send me a little dry sample, right? She didn't right. send it to me before. So she records one, and I'm not screen sharing, so I don't know what she's doing, right? And then she sends me the file, and I listen to it while we're on the call, and it's crunchy and brittle and distorted. And I'm going, hmm, it didn't sound like that on Zoom. And then I do a screen share, and she's running Studio One. This multi-track software with a ton of pre-built tracks with all sorts of processing in it. And then I said, can you send me another clip with no processing on it at all? She sends me another clip. It still has distortion. I said, are you sure you have all the processing turned off? She says, I have the gain turned up to a what? Uh, to a 14 dB or something on this track. I'm like, do you know why? She says, no. No. I said, turn that <laughs> off. And now record me another sample. Third sample is the charm. No clipping, no distortion. I said, you've got it. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, mopping up pulling out a lot of wires and cables, getting back to basics, putting the mic in the right place, all those things, the basics never get old um, right. because people need them. So that's, come that's to us, get the right information right. quickly and efficiently. Right. The other thing here is that people can talk about stuff and write stuff. The only way to know if it's right is how it sounds. And you have to know what it's supposed to sound like. <laughs> Whistle. And, Exactly. And and so, you know, reading an entire book about how to record just means nothing to me. You've got to experience it. You've got to understand what things are supposed to sound like. And you don't try to satisfy your own ears until you are well trained to know what it's supposed to sound like. And that can take years. I mean, George and I have been doing this. I mean, I've been listening to audio since, you know, 1974. Uh, I, I know what it's supposed to sound like. George is an expert in audio. We're the guys to talk to. So if you got a problem, that's where you got to go. All right, we're going to take a little break and we got a pile of questions to answer. So don't go away. We will be right back. This is Ariana Ratner and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. From Voice Over, from vo- from Voice Over Essentials.com, it's the relationship savior, the multicolor LED VO recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign. It's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here. And a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording. Blue, playing back. Green, it's a wrap. Plug in the seven foot long cord and hang it on a doorknob or wall hook using the included chain. For voice workers, silence really is golden. And gold is one of the 20 colors you can choose from. Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Well, it's time in the show where we get to thank our sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and Source Nexus, tools that are going to be increasingly a part of so many voiceover productions as they have been, especially over the last three years of the pandemic. This tool set is what allows studios to collaborate with their clients and their talent all over the world. The talent can be at home, that's you, the voice actor. The studio can be in another state or another country. And their client, the one you're recording for, can be scattered all over the world. And with those tools from Source Elements, Source Nexus in the studio, and Source Connect in your home studio, you can connect to everyone and everything. An amazing set of tools. Nexus is like virtual patch cables that lets the studio patch Zoom or Google Meet or any Microsoft Teams, whatever the technology is the client insists on using, they can patch it into the studio and bring everybody into the same conversation while you, the talent, 
or giving them great sounding audio and Source Connect. And if you want to give it a try, head over to source-elements.com and get a 15-day free trial and check out all the really helpful learning content they have on that website. Their support is second to none. Thanks, Source Elements. We'll be right back with Tech Talk and all your questions right after this. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Hey now, we back. Let me unmute your mic for you. It's nice because we can both control things. That's oh, right. there we go. I figured it out by myself. Hey. You know, I mean, we can do all sorts of things with this. We can go like that. We can go this. We can do that. We can. It's do nice though solo. because if if my mic's muted, you know, because you can't hear me. If your mic's muted, I know because I can't hear you. So it's like we can watch each other's backs that way. Exactly. Well, we got a huge audience right now, and they've got a huge amount of questions. So Indeed they do. Let's, let's go to them here. Vic Case asks, George, mm. now this was written in. Somebody emailed this so it gets to the front of the line. Head of the line. All right. George, you made a passing remark about the hypercardioid pattern in the last Tech Talk for mics where you can select between a cardioid or a hypercardioid pattern. Do you recommend one or the other for a voiceover studio, or does it depend on the mic? He has a CAD M179 in his home studio, and that's a really cool mic because it's got lots of switchable patterns in it, like a U87 does, but it doesn't cost nearly as much as a U87. What are your thoughts yeah. on the, the, the M179? It is a bizarrely decent <laughs> mic for how cheap it is. I got to say... I, I, CAD is such an interesting company, right? I mean, we've we've known, we've a lot of us have known and heard and you even used their CAD E100S. Dan, you have one, right? I have one. Haven't used it in a while because I've got this wonderful Mojave here now in my 416. But there are situations where you might use it. Yeah. But the, it's a very different mic from the, the 179, though. Yeah, well, that one's a fixed pattern mic, right? It does one. It's a one-trick pony. There, it's a. It's a. I, th but it, I don't know but if they it, call it a super or a hyper. I, 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 th I think it's no. I think it's a. It's got a very wide cardioid pattern to it, but it also has a um, a pad on it, a twenty dB pad, which right, everybody turns on. Like, why is it so quiet? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. And, when it's a big uh, number, it doesn't mean it's louder. Right. <laughs> There's and, a minus and, in front of it. Right, and a high pass filter, which is mm -hmm. kind of nice. Right. So, but the 179, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to change patterns, what does changing a pattern do for somebody, though? Yeah, I mean, I, it very much depends on the booth and uh, and how you use the mic. So, that that I think the the pattern the pattern control on that is actually completely variable, which is also really unusual, especially at this price. So you can you can dial it in. So at the end of the day, what makes sense is completely 100% based on listening. And so what I would recommend is to record yourself on a track. And while recording that piece of script or something, turn uh, start it at cardioid, record, you know, a sentence of the script. Start turning it an increment and then record another sentence or the same sentence and keep incrementally adjusting the mic and recording another sentence and keep doing that. But don't listen to it right now. Not until you've completely done this whole recording test. This might take you five minutes going through all these different settings, right? You might even, you might even slate with the recording and saying, now 
uh, cardioid. Now this is more more hypercardioid or whatever. Whatever you have to do, right? And listen to the difference. And listen to the difference. It's going to be very hard to judge that while listening real time. you got to stop and then listen to it and play it back. And then when you're done, you're going to know. And if you don't know, then your, your, your hearing isn't tuned well yet. You don't have the experience. And then you might want to bounce it off me or Dan because then we'll help you figure out what is the best pattern setting for your voice and your booth. Right, exactly. And it, it, and that's it. It's all acoustics, which is one of the most important parts of uh, you know getting your your booth set up is, you know, sound coming in, you don't want that, you don't want it bouncing around. And right. Like you said, using a certain pattern might actually help you get the sound that you really really need. As the mic gets more um it is, as the mic gets more directional in one direction, like the right out of the front of the mic. Mm-hmm. It does some weird things. It grows a little tail <laughs> in the back. So as it gets more directional this way, it actually starts to have a tail on it, right? Well, as you go to the farthest extreme, which is called figure eight, that's the extent of that. It is literally the front and the back of the mic are equally sensitive. But the side effect of it is the sides of the mic are completely null or dead. So you might find that even figure eight works well. Yeah, yeah, right there you're hearing mostly just thumping and not much else, right? Because it's right. the back of the mic. As you do figure eight, the sides of the mic have no pickup. So you might find a figure eight is a surprisingly better pattern because maybe you've got a window to one side or maybe you have a desk right underneath and that's all reflecting sound. The figure eight pattern will tune it out. So yeah, try it out and listen. All right. Our next question uh, from Alicia Hurley on YouTube just, oh, don't a... skip, don't skip Jeff. He's, oh, no, we'll he's... get to him. We'll get to oh, him. Okay, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> uh, she says, I need a backup interface and was looking at the Focusrite 2i2. I just inherited a free Focusrite 8i6 Gen 2. Is that just as good for basic voiceover with a Mac? <laughs> an interface is an interface. What what does an 8i6 do? It's got it lots of It adds a lot more crap to play around with. That's right, you know. You have to have a run you have to run a control panel to yeah. access all the features. Yeah. Yeah. If you're using all of those features, you might be better off just using a 2i2, you know. But yeah. keep it simple. It's the simple interfaces that work best because you don't have to do much with them. Set the well, level. Well, yeah, plus all the features are right on the unit. Like right. with a 2i2, there's a direct monitor button. You turn it right. on. You turn it turn off. It off. Right. With something like this, you might not hear yourself in your headphones and you won't know why until you install their software and then you install the software and you get lost in their console and you start realizing, oh my God, what did I do? Why am I using this thing? So <laughs> it, it, keep it around because you got it for free. It's nice of them, but use it as a backup for the 2i2. Deal with that problem when it comes when it comes to it because right. you, won't, you won't need it. Hopefully the 2i2 won't fail on you. Right. Um, Let's see, you've all, in, in the past, we've recommended a power surge strip for equipment. Could you address that again? Yeah, it, it, a good way to make sure that you've got the right power is using a, uh, a line filter uh, and a, uh, what they call a line conditioner. And getting, making sure that you've got clean power going to all of your equipment, you know, your interface, your, well, your, mostly your computer, that's where a lot, of, a lot of the problems happen with uh, electronics and your monitors and whatever else. Always good to have a, 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 a something that's going to keep your 120 at 120 and monitor what it's at, right? Yeah, I mean, the subject of these products is sort of a rat hole because there's like, there's $50 devices, $200 devices, 500 and they go up from there, right? Some of them are line conditioners. Some of them are. Uh, some of them have voltage regulation. Oh my God! On and on and on. Right? Um, you know, and and it may reduce the noise floor of your recording. It could if there's a lot of noise in your power, and and you're always dealing with that and going, where's the noise coming from? It could conceivably reduce the noise in your recording. But yeah. here's the deal: a lot of times they don't do anything at all and they just cost a lot of money so if you're going to try one either just get one that's cheap because at least it's got a surge protector to protect your expensive equipment from a surge 
or get a really expensive one, like $200 plus, and actually try it out and record with it plugged in and see if it actually does make a audible or in any way noticeable difference. Yeah. And then if it does, then you knew it was actually worth buying. Yeah. Or go to a garage sale and pick up one while someone's thrown out a stereo, which I did. I've got a monster cable power conditioner here that I've been using for over 10 years that I bought for 25 bucks at a, at a garage I, sale. I have a Furman. What is this thing called? Oh, okay. Now you're going to become a power, power uh, filter snob. So. <laughs> oh, I've had it since I was running a studio. It's an AR-1215. Yeah. And I've had this since 1998. <laughs> so that's the only reason I, I have this. It was like, it's like a $700 power conditioner, but I had it in my recording truck back in the day. Wow. And the, talk about gear that lasts. I'd this say. is literally the only thing I have from those, that era. And it mm -hmm. still works. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Now I'll do Jeff's question. Alrighty. As a matter of fact, I'll let, well, I'll read it. You're, we'll rest your voice here. Thank you. This is, he says, the Rode Video Go Mic 2, this guy, this guy, um, says, is really sensitive, like too sensitive. I'm standing like two, two and a half feet in front of it and the camera. It sounds like it's reaching into my mouth and amplifying my mouth noise to untenable levels. Can I aim it to the side, much, much like I would by 416, so I'm not speaking directly down the barrel? Reducing gain doesn't seem to help. Yeah, that probably would help. It's going to reduce plosives. And what camera is he plugging it into? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know what's going on after your mic, uh, yeah, Jeff. He, he so may, I can't, he, couldn't tell you what's going on. He may on. not have the, the limiter on or something like that. Well, the, yeah, the camera's got a manual gain control. You want to turn it way down. Turn that down. That might um, be where the issue is. It's so hard to know. And yeah, it, it, if you don't, the pad is only going to matter. He's asking me, is it? He said, iPhone 12 Pro, is it plugged in with USB or, or something else? If it's plugged in with USB, it like, just like in the review video that you just watched, you saw that I installed the Rode Central app. You need to install that so that you can then control the mic and then you can turn on the pad. So this mic is so sensitive that you may actually need the pad for the use case of what you're doing. Hmm. Um, so yeah, it's su surprisingly sensitive, but then again, I have the Rode NTG five and this mic is stupid sensitive. So I bet these mics share a lot in common internally. Yeah. This is a $500 mic. This is a hundred dollar mic. Um, it, whenever I use this, whatever was plugged in last, it's 10 dB louder than anything. Mm. It's, it's ridiculous. So that is exactly what you're dealing with. And that's probably one of the few cases of where with a pad is going to make sense. Yeah. All right, uh, Grace Newton, who always has a good question. She says, I have an, a MacBook Air M1 for, what the hell was that? Thunder, that's what that was. Did you hear thunder? I just heard thunder. Whoa. It's really coming it's down. so here. rare here. That's going to make Jacob very happy. He loves thunder. He cool. loves the rain, as Jackson Brown once said. <laughs> uh, she says, I have an, a MacBook Air M1 for video podcast recording. Do you recommend the purchase of an external webcam? And if so, which ones are the best for that use? Well, there's this one that, you know, George is like making me play with all the time. It yeah. Can, it'll do all this cool stuff. Um, yeah, this is a pretty insane camera. Like this is the, the, is the, 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 the camera is built into the MacBooks, Apple. Yeah. I don't understand you. <laughs> uh, they're terrible. They are terrible. Um, even a $80 Logitech camera is better than what's built into the MacBook, even the new MacBooks. But an iPhone camera is an amazing <laughs> These things are webcam. fabulous. Yeah, and you, well, you plug that in with a lightning cable, and then you can install any number of virtual camera driver programs. You can use OBS, which is hopelessly far more complicated than you probably need. Or you could install, what do I have on this machine? Because I have something. It's just not on my dock right now. I think it's called... Uh, Camo Studio? Camo Studio. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what's on my phone. Yes. So. Camo Studio. And that will turn your phone, any one of the cameras on your iPhone, into the best webcam you've ever seen. So cool. I would use the camera you already have. Now, if you don't have an iPhone, which you could be the case, Dan, what is the name of that one? Isn't it the uh, Insta360 Link? The Insta360 link, yes. 
Yeah, this is great little cat. Look at look how clear it is. It is got great color. Has a great picture. It's a little more techy and geeky than your typical webcam, and certainly and, a little more expensive. And but it will follow you. Which it is, will follow you if you wanted to. It will, if, you, if you wanted to. Yeah. yeah but I'm not going to have it do that. We either. found out that not turning that on is a good idea. Uh, I was using it for a, for a consult the other day, and I'm like walking around from the booth, and it's like following me around. I'm like, whoa, it's kind of creepy. I also uh, have this camera here, which I will not recommend. This is called the Lumi, Lumina. That's literally, that's the name. That's the brand. That's the product. That's the model number. This is called Lumina. Okay. I thought it was going to be awesome. I bought it on a Kickstarter, and it's been a year since I got it, and it still sucks. Yeah. Yet it, you it, still it, have it mounted there, perhaps. The, well, because they keep yeah. releasing new firmware for it, because they oh. keep saying one of these days you'll be able to hold up a little color card, yeah. and it will automatically calibrate the camera and look amazing. And yes, this feature works now a year later and it still doesn't look very good. So, <laughs> so never mind. That's a two hundred dollar camera right there. So the one that Dan's got, I mean the Brio also has been around like five years, the Logitech Brio. Dan's got one of those too. Um right we also we also both have a UC seventy by a company called Mokosi, M O K O S E. Um that one is tough to use because the lenses are completely manually adjusted, so they're tough to get focused and everything. So I, I wouldn't go with that one unless you've got an absolutely, like I'm using it now, but I never ever touch it, <laughs> you know? And I don't hold anything close because if you do, it's never in focus. So anyway, right. there's our recommendations. Okay. All right, we got time for one more here uh, from Patricia Andrea says, would George be doing a webinar on how to use Twisted Wave to add sound to video the right way, please? Not oh. that hard, I mean. Well, Audition is probably better for doing that. But. Yeah, definitely. Um, Twisted Wave is not used for adding audio to video. Yeah. Just like Twisted Wave is not a multi-track program, it's not a multi-track video program either. So you can't lay audio over a video in Twisted Wave directly. You right. probably can hack it to do it, but it's not designed to do it. And so <coughs> it would not be my first choice <clears throat> for that purpose. It's great for editing the video, you can do very, very easy and fast edits, but that's sort of the extent. It's kind of a one trick pony. Yeah. Have you played around with it yet, Dan? The video function? I haven't needed to. I, <laughs> you, I just use Adobe Audition. Yeah, because you have Adobe. Throw, I can just throw the, the video file in there and I can, I can dub yeah. stuff. I can sync it up with uh, somebody speaking German and it's like, yeah. Uh, okay, I can move it over here a little bit. Trying to match really the lip flats. Yeah, yeah, not as easy to do in Twisted Way. Yeah, this, well, it'd be, uh, yeah, I mean, it'd be ridiculously hard or basically impossible. Right. <laughs> so what, one last thing, play the voice real kids family voiceover, voiceover family. Is this is this the, the same as a Rycote? Yeah. I think what happened, I think uh, Rycote made a deal with Rode, a licensing deal whatever it was. Um, and so Rode is making the Rycote. It's the same one that I, yeah, recommend for Sennheiser 416s and every other shotgun mic out there. It's essentially identical. Cool. And uh, it's nice because it doesn't, it doesn't have the rubber bands that stretch out and dry out and then the mic is sagging, you know, it, in it. It does a pretty good job. Yeah. All right. Hey, lots of great questions, everybody. And that's going to do Man, it for, for now. Time flew. It, well, or either that or whatever drugs I'm on made time slow down. I one, one or the other way, the time stretched, and I think it's all in my adult brain. Okay. <laughs> well, in that case. All right, well, we're going to take another quick break here, and we'll be right back to clean up everything that's left right after this. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. 
Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the VoiceOver Body Shop. All right, we're back. See, it automatically comes back. I don't even have to even do anything. It's amazing. <laughs> it's like my car. I, you know, my new Camry. It goes right down the center lane. And you can let go of the wheel if you're in cruise control. It keeps the right distance from the car in front of you. That's pretty neat. And keeps you in the lane. So that is, that is this cool. This is interesting. But you got to sort of keep your finger on the wheel anyway. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> Just in case. Because you'll be able to react faster than the computer to an oncoming accident. Probably yes. not. No, probably, yeah. no, but it automatically <laughs> breaks, too. It breaks! Exactly. My, exactly. But sometimes my foot will be on the brake before it, you know, or before my wife says, stop. <laughs> yeah, anyway. There's a couple of other questions that were asked. So, uh, you know, if you write to us, we will get to those questions. There's one about Discord and, uh, and, and acoustics for a studio break so we'll we'll get to those you know we'll write back to you and uh because we know who you are or write to us directly at the guys at vobs.tv let me make sure that it, it there it is write to us at the guys at vobs.tv and that way we'll answer your questions yeah you know? discord has its own crazy learning curve i've been yeah. using it in fact the video i showed you guys today i edited with discord and had a few very frustrating quirks I still managed to get it yeah. done, but my it's, son lives on Discord. So yeah, I mean, and you know, what? we're all calling we're calling it Discord because I call it Discord by mistake. I think what we're actually talking about is Descript. Oh, uh, maybe the video editor, <laughs> Descript. Oh. I used Descript to edit the video, and I think Grace is talking about Descript. Okay, yeah, Discord case. is a whole Discord's a whole nother deal. Yeah. Descript is also a, a big learning curve. Anyway, I will someday maybe teach a course on Descript once I learn how to use it and if people really, really want to learn it. Okay, so right to us there. Okay, let's see here. Uh, next week on this very show, we will have another great guest. I have a couple of great people who have expressed interest. Uh, people like Scott Brick and Maurice LaMarche. We're trying nice. to get them. Got to get the email addresses right. So. If you know Maurice's actual email address, send it to us. <laughs> yeah, let us know. At you? the guys at VOBS.tv. Yeah, exactly. All righty. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, we've got, uh, oh, you know who's going to be on next week? Jason Lanier White. Oh, uh, excellent. That's I, I will be healthy for that so I can be there in person because I'm pretty sure he will be there in person unless something I, happens. I would imagine so. He just lives around the block that right. makes it a lot easier okay our donors of the week we have robert leadham steven chandler casey clack jonathan grant tom pinto shelly avellino hey shelly greg thomas a doctor voice antland productions martha con 949 designs christopher epperson sarah borges philip sapir brian page patty gibbons rob raider shauna bennington baird don griffith Trey Mosley, 
Diana Birdsall. Hi, Diana. And, and Sandra. Sandra Manwiller. Thanks uh, for all your support. That's how we keep this thing running the way it's supposed to run. Mm-hmm. All righty. Uh, hey, if you ha- need help with your home voiceover studio, you can go join me over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. And I will be able to do that kind of stuff for you. Just ask your questions there. Or if you want to do a consult, go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. Or if you want to talk to George, um, that's George. not it. It's George the Tech. It's that the one. Dot the Tech. And uh, I do have a code for you guys. VOBS Fan 10 gets you 10% off your bookings um, through, through the old website and the new website when we finally have it. All right. It will happen. It will happen. I promise. <laughs> All righty. Uh, okay. There it goes. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks to our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and World-Voices.org. The Industry Association <laughs> of Freelance Voice Talent. Go join now. Right this second. Anyway, uh, thanks to Jeff Holman for keeping a great job in the chat room tonight. Lots of great questions, and that's what makes this show work. Anyway, Indeed. that's going to that's gonna do it for us this week. Oh, we also have to thank Lee Penny. Just <laughs> Lee Penny. Um, and that's why he keeps sending us money, because we keep mentioning his name. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> See, now send us money. We'll say your name. It makes it really simple. Anyway, uh, this is not an easy business, folks. There's a lot of stuff you have to understand with acting and business. And your audio's got to be right. But the bottom line is, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. Make, just making sure. Uh, and this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. We'll see you next week. Jason Lanier White. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.